I'll be touching a few themes today. The first one about the five smart virgins. And uh, according to these uh, spiritual things, and a lot of times you don't want to listen, you don't like to be taxed and to be right in front of God. And when we are practicing this cross life, we'll try to be disciplined. And discipline is one of those uh, spiritual things. And usually, we don't want to do these spiritual things. And it is easier for us to say that God has done everything for us, because by my sins have been forgiven, and one part are living like that. And it is, and those who are saying like that are those uh, foolish virgins, because they are all the time saying that Christ uh, has done everything. But will be concentrating. We we want to be among these five smart virgins, as Bible says, because many at that day will try to enter, but they won't be able to enter. Why? Because you have to be among these uh, smart virgins, and uh, we have to show God these uh, turning away fruits. And here is this one nuance in here, and a question arises, how, how to keep this fire? Uh, Jesus said, uh, so that uh, I would wish that this fire would be burning. What is this fire? This, this, this fire is which destroys sin in your life. But this is this uh, fire which has to burn. It has to be with aggress aggressivity, and because uh, we have to train so that uh, we, you are sweating. I can uh, give you an example, my experience. In my case. Uh, in boxing, in the first round, you are very like energetic, and then when you are being uh, given to the nose, yes, you have been hit uh, to the nose, and then you don't feel uh, after that pain, and, and you are not concentrating on the pain, but you have uh, this. Uh, plan to concentrate on your destiny and the second on the second round you are tired already and you are sweating and you are uh, nothing at all and so and in the case in, of the Christian how to get this uh, type of feeling for Christian because God can't give you oil if you are not burning for him. Uh, what's the point to uh, anoint you with oil if you are not burning for Christ? And if you are a sleeper, you are sleeping. And here is this moment when we are fighting, and sometimes these fights are really hurtful, and they are uh, hard. When we are fighting, then this fire is burning, and here is this scripture also, and many scriptures, but this one scripture, and we have to get this fire, and it won't be if you are, will be staying at home. When no, there is no problem to be in the comfort, like these virgins, these five uh, foolish virgins, but their oil was disappearing. God has been called us to be apprentices, and we have to be aggressive, and it is nice. And for some it won't be a good thing. And here, here is this one uh, comparison. Those who are in sports, when you have uh, at some type of level, there is no problem for you. Th those who are really doing athletics or javelin throwing, there is no problem that you are dirty, that you don't have this uh, 
this uh, not the right where but but you a concrete target you know and there's uh, no there's no difference like if you are uh, eating something or not and there if you have won something if you win some type of uh, sin, then you feel this fire which is burning inside of you. You have been filled with this fire, and, and Satan is attacking you with this, with this telepathy, you know, and you have this fire, and uh, then you are aggressive, and then God gives you this oil, this anointing. It is this uh, holiness of God which has been given to you. Uh, you know, they are also in these icons, you know. Uh, it is not this anointing, but it is uh, more, more different like type of anointing. It's like uh, yeah, this wholeness of God and it burns out, you know, as these uh, holy ones who are living in obedience to God. And these demons, they were going out with the noise because they couldn't stand this, this type of anointing. And then uh, this, Jesus went to this uh, obsessed and these demons, they were yelling. And what was uh, torturing them, this was this, uh, this whole mess of God. And if you are this passive one, this foolish one, uh, who, do, who doesn't want to practice the uh, Christian life or, or the cross life, then you won't be among these uh, smart ones. But if you are among these smart ones, then we remember those two men. Uh, one was uh, building his house on the rock, and one was uh, building on the sand. And it is a work. And when we are fighting, then it really you feel like aggressive. You, you have been kept for three rounds, you, you are wobbling on your feet, and you don't care if you have sweat or you, uh, or you are in discomfort. We have to be in this type of situation all the time. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit. Yes, you are getting emotional. You are starting to sing. Uh, you want to get away from these uh, really uh, little things from Satan. And uh, those are blessed are those who are poor first for righteousness, you know. Then I have to change my coordination, maybe, or change. Here is this action, you know. Here is this fire. For God, and this blessing of God, and this grace, you know. And so that in order for us to get this fire and to be aggressive, we have to fight. We have to get on this uh, narrow road, because, because these evangelical commandments, because they, uh, we are uh, not uh, that with, uh, with, with our body, you know, we are not uh, born to, to, to be obedient to Satan, you know, and all these uh, manipulations of him, because God says, uh, get away from the world, like, and when we are practicing our Christianity, and, and if we are not caught just simply just calling this uh, verse, you know, the sinner's prayer. But when we are practicing uh, this belief, then uh, gospel is a power. You will, you will all the time be in readiness. The round hasn't ended. The round will be, will be ending when we will be, when we will be in heaven, only then. And of course, there is this uh, evil day, you know, as the Bible says, so that uh, it is said in Ephesians, so that uh, take upon all these uh, the armor of God, so that you could stand in that day. What is that day? Uh, it is not like that, that uh, after the, if you die, then you just uh, one moment and you are in heaven. There is some type of uh, road which leads to heaven and this uh, life of belief. 
and we will take a look uh, in the psalm. Psalm 39, from verse uh, 1 to 4. Psalm 39, verses 1 to 4. Psalm. And in the ring, when you have uh, got, when you get beaten, you know. And when you were falling, then you raise up, you get up and you are thinking that uh, the next time I will be dodging it. In what way? Simply fighting. And when there you see what type of road. So Psalm 39, verse 1, 2, 4. And also you can see that I was silent inside. You can see that it was silent. I was not talking was only outside. But you can be silent outside, but inside uh, you are not being silent. He carried this one moment. He was silent inside, inside. Himself, he was uh, in attention. I was silent, I was uh, deep. I was not talking about uh, the good one, but my pain, as you can see in these words. I was uh, looking in some other type of translations. What does it mean? In the verse 4, my heart was burning in my chest. I was burning in what time I was burning. In that time, he, he had also these attacks or in his thoughts. In that time, he was and then at the time when he was fighting this fire okay. and he was positively aggressive against all of these storms of salt which were attacking from the side of Satan uh, against the um, telepathy of Satan my heart was burning in my chest in my thoughts in my thoughts Yes, in my thought. And the fire was burning in my soul. This fire was burning in my soul. And I was talking with my tongue. And then he was saying, and he was uh, telling what he is in Jesus Christ in what type of moment when he was practicing this cross life. That's the uh, one thing I was telling you in the beginning. It is this practice of inner life. And then the, these next verses they show you the dialogue with God. And here you can see uh, the poorness of spirit, you know, humbleness, uh, crying, the dialogue uh, starting to happen. And here is this uh, type of order. You can't just take out the poorness of spirit and then you will be at the top of the building. No. Uh, if you take out the poorness of spirit, uh, it won't happen. And here is this one thing I, I wanted to show you. So, in Luke 20, 49. So let us be among these smart virgins. Let us keep this temperature in ourselves. 
And you will get all of these nice things in your life. And you will be fiery. And there is one thing uh, to this. And the, the believers, the first believers knew this. Despite they knew the spirit realm, the spirit world, they knew it. But one thing, if you look at the, the soldier, you know, he, he's standing uh, unmoving, you know, but at the same time he's very attentive, he's very attentive. He's listening to everything, he's a soldier, he's standing on guard, and this, uh, we have to have this type of uh, moment in our lives as well. Uh, like the soldier from outside, he doesn't look like he's doing something, but on the inside, he's on guard. We have to be uh, concentrated, fully concentrated to hear God and at the same time we are so concentrated and we, then we are pushing away all of our thoughts, our uh, wishes and at the same time from outside it would look that you are doing nothing but on the inside you are uh, pulling away all of these bad things and this uh, school of silence you know this attentiveness and when this aggressor comes this spiritual aggressor Satan with his telepathy with temptations we have to kick him out like all these uh, sportsmen they are pushing them away one time the second time and we have to be really aggressive because it is a nice thing to serve God uh, and for Adam it is also said to keep uh, in order gardens and uh, nowadays it is the same with the street you know but we have to keep our soul from the aggressor, from the attacker. And when you are inside of this, you will have this fire. It will definitely be this fire inside of you. And that's, that's why it was said to those foolish ones, go and buy the oil. It is a process. There is this change. You have to take out from your soul these bad things and then the aggressor will run away you, you have to be like a soldier he's, he's, he's all intact, he's on guard, he's concentrated he has a contact with God as David said because he had this inner silence he had a contact with God. And we, uh, we can really thank for everything to God. And I would like to return to about uh, our closest ones, our relatives. We, we, we have uh, some type of prayer life, uh, fighting life. And then we are doing everything right. And we want that our closest ones are being saved. Not only just save, to say the sinner's prayer, you know. And we want everything to happen. But there is one problem. One problem. When we are praying for our closest ones, our children, our parents, whatsoever they would be, we, we want that it would happen just like that. It one moment, but it happens that, uh, that, it, that it isn't happening. It would be really strange that uh, when also seeing in the scriptures, it shouldn't be like that. And when we are looking in the word of God, when we take this uh, most evil what, what, how will we be living with the thought that our closest ones are not being saved here in heaven? 
But uh, it is said that in the heaven now all the, the tears will be dried up. All these uh, crying, all like in it, it, it really sounds like a big fan, you know, that it dries up all these tears and all these uh, hurt feelings, and we will be emotional. We don't know this because because of our human thinking because if the Bible is said that but what will we be doing with our closest ones? Yes, of course we will, we will be more obedient to God, but what we will be doing with our closest ones when they are not in heaven? It is a really big problem. Problem Unfortunately, and it is hard to talk about this, and uh, Job had this type of thing. Because a believing man is uh, he's blessing our his closest ones, you know, he's uh, praying for his closest ones. And these positive things are uh, nice ones. Yes, but there is this other side as well. And then in the verse 13, and in the verse 18, because uh, it turns out that they were uh, spirit drinkers, you know, and they had these celebrations. And when we see this verse 18, and uh, it turns out that uh, they weren't like talking about the spiritual things in this verse. But there is, there is this one thing. They were eating and drinking in the verse 13, and then also in the verse 18. Your daughter and your sons were drinking wine. They had uh, some type of uh, bad thing in their lives. And the believing man, a believer, they, they died. In the verse 18. And what you do? You have talked uh, in a lot of ways to your closest one, to telling about Jesus Christ. And it is a tragedy, yes, from one side, yes. You know, as you, in the case of Son of David, Ab Absalom. When we take this uh, moment, in Jeremiah, you know, chapter 8, verses 19, 23. Jeremiah, chapter, chapter 8, verses 19, 23. And we also have this type of thing when you are praying for your closest ones, and it seems to they don't hear you. Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 19, 23. There was this desperation. It was a uh, desperation to God. And this uh, nation of Hebrews, they are not turning away. We are talking to our closest ones, and they are not turning away from their sins. And there is one type of thing why he is doing that. And maybe, maybe you have talked to your closest one with anointing and, and with confidence, because uh, there is this problem, there is this free choice for this person, you know, there is this call of despair, and it, here, is, here is this uh, yelling of despair, you know, because, uh, because they are going our closest ones in the direction of death. As you can see, the Jeremiah is walking away, you know, despair, you know, desperation has really 
around me and then you are talking for so many years your closest month and then the person chooses to go in the way of death and you can't do anything aren't there any medication maybe there were some strong uh, drink for the healing is and in our translation, in our you know, aren't there any doctors? Why these doctors uh, haven't been healed? Why? Because they are living in this regime of sin. And in verse 23, we don't read in the second translation, you know, because it isn't translated in the right way. As you can see, this translation is not correct. But there is this call hard. So verse 23, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 23. Because they can be broken because of this uh, world of sin. And they have this uh, situation and this uh, condition of despair. And it won't be like in this case that you will be praying and 100% uh, that... Uh, the answer will be there, you know. and if so, so, maybe somebody is telling you you are not believing in the right way, no, it is, there is this free choice for the person. There is one thing what we take, everything into account. God has promised that every Tear will be dried up. I don't know in what way, uh, how God will do it, but uh, it will be like that. Because I also have this uh, yelling, this call, despair for our closest months. One thing is this uh, life of prayer, as I told you in the beginning. It is okay. But, but uh, I would like to also have for my closest and also to be saved. It, it really sounds tragic. Huh? Yes, there are these uh, nice examples that when you are praying and everything happens, you know, and there are these positive examples, but uh, the life is really harsh one. But it doesn't happen all the time as uh, as we want, because all the time there is this free choice for each and every person. And what to do that we wouldn't be in this uh, really deep uh, thinking, and here is this how can you call this uh, goodness of God and the goodness of God is on you? Because uh, Jesus said, uh, learn from me because I am humble. He was humble because uh, he wasn't... Uh, he, he was also not sinning, and that's why he also was humble. And there is this one form of humbleness who knew his sinfulness because he saw his sin, because he didn't get out of each and every sin, and be there was this Pharisee, you know, who I was doing this and that. This tax collector's attitude, you know. God, be merciful on me. This tax collector that is one form of this humbleness. It is a nice form of humbleness. Because God is not pushing you away. That type of person who is humble, who has seen this. Uh, 
poorness of spirit, because the uh, poorness of spirit is uh, one of the main things of uh, Christianity, you have to be poor in spirit, because if we, if we see the real condition of ourselves, of our soul, and then this one form of humbleness, and there is this one thing that you won't be fantasizing, you won't be too gotten away with some other thing, because, because uh, and this form of uh, proudness, it won't be so big. And there is this one, in, this is this one interesting moment, because when some type of negative things happen to us, we usually are getting too emotional, you know, where is God? But in this form of humbleness, and we will go further, and this one form of humbleness, they had uh, the spiritual father, and it means that the first has these good works, he has this uh, life of cross, and, and he has died for the commandments, and Christ is his in himself, and this type of person, it is uh, this other form of humbleness. There is humbleness and there is this smart humbleness. Uh, when you are good to God, when you when you don't have these death sins, because I have died with commandments to commandments. Because in the Bible it is read that I have died uh, with commandments to commandments. And you are in this position of humbleness. You are not uh, being uh, too cocky. But you are living in humbleness. And God is teaching it Himself. And the Bible tells it as well, because I am not a servant anymore, I am not sinning anymore, I have uh, gotten to the level of the fathers, the spiritual fathers I mean. And so he is really like coloring it. Let us read the uh, Gospel of Luke 17, 10. When you have everything uh, done, what I have trusted to you, let us tell, and then in these other verses you can read for yourself, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verse 10. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 10, and when you have done everything, we are unworthy servants, because we did what we had to do. And Paul had this condition, do you remember that? And the uh, epistle of to Timothy 1.15, epistle to Timothy 1.15. He called himself a sinner, Paul. Oh, you? You were living an uh, unnatural life. You had this, uh, you had this uh, God's oldness on you. But he called himself a sinner. Here, it is the smart humbleness. When you have words, that you have really gotten in the fullness of Christ, you are in this level of spiritual father. And what happens? It happens that all these conditions, negative, any type of conditions, you will be fully trusting to God and that you will understand that God is working really for your heart and that uh, each and every of these type of, uh, bad things from other people, they don't uh, let you uh, be too proud, you know. And when you really are in some negative situations or in problems or in pain, then you will be surrendering to God fully. 
and in these type of situations you will you will thank God simply you will be sur surrendering fully to God so that you won't get too proud one is this humbleness that you are the beginning of your road as I told you with the tax collector and that you are not uh, getting too cocky with your virtue and, some, and a lot of times we don't feel proudness in our life then God is putting us in some hard situation so that He would be humble, you know, and that's why Paul had this uh, smart humble move because he was really uh, happy when he was in this hard situation. And then you will be really able to say that uh, each and everything is useful for the believer. And then he will be telling to those people that they don't understand. But, uh, but a normal believer are bad and or negative and the good things, they all are useful for the Christian. And that's why he doesn't get it into the depression, he understands everything. And I was just telling you about the Paul, First Corinthians 15, a 18, that's Paul, you know, as you see this humbleness of him, he was humble, very humble in this type of situation. He put the position of humbleness because he knew the meaning, because this uh, believer's life, because through humbleness, God is really good on the person. God is really good only to those who are humble, because uh, God is uh, against those who are proud. And also you can see further. In the first Corinthians, as I told you, I am not. I am the smallest among the apostles. Once, not me, but the grace of God. You can see this humbleness. You can see the Paul was a big man. You know, he is putting himself all the time in the humbleness. But, and everything what you have done, just say I'm not. I'm an unworthy servant. I'm serving to God at this time level with my life of cross carries this form of humbleness. And you can see that everything which happens with a the Christian they are useful. And we can be thankful to God for them, those type of things. And also the bad things are useful for the Christian. The bad things are also useful for the Christian because they keep you in this humble position and you are trusting to God more. And sometimes when we are in these bad conditions, we are not trusting the God so much. And then you won't be getting into this. Uh, the, this silly situation, you know. But uh, those people who are getting too emotional because they are not trusting God too much and they don't know these uh, spiritual processes. You know? So, one more time. Prayer life, let us be like soldiers, because if, when the aggressor comes, let us be aggressive, let us be very aggressive, like in sports, you are sweating, you are tired, but let us be aggressive against these uh, uh, manipulations of Satan, and tricks, and what is the answer? When you are being obedient to God, you will see these tricks of Satan in your life, you will see, uh, you, will, you will know one thing of God and the other, but in the 
fight and you, if you don't know against what to fight and how Satan is working, you can't then fight. You can't orientate in the spiritual world. But when we are practicing and when we are being obedient, then God shows us one and the other side. He reveals Himself and in the prayer light. We are like soldiers, you know, and like soldier, he is from outside, he is doing nothing, but from the inside, he is on guard. And let us be ready for the fight. And one more thing to all of this uh, about the children. I know that somebody tells that there is this promise that everything is working. Yes, but there is this other side as well. Let us pray for our closest ones. Let us not get, in, get let us not get tired of praying for our closest ones. And you can see that he, uh, Job's children, he was praying for his closest ones. And David, he was also praying for his closest ones. And when we will do everything, then, and when we will do everything, then these tears will be dried. I don't know how it will happen, but one verse is that, humanly speaking, I don't know how it will happen is at this moment, I don't know, but I know. Let us pray for our close response. Thank you.